Good evening. We left you last night with something of a mystery. What prompted a whistleblower inside the intelligence community to raise what the community's top watchdog decided were, quote, urgent concerns? And why haven't those concerns been brought before Congress as the law requires? Tonight, there's new reporting from CNN and from others on the substance of the complaint and why this is turning into something the White House, from the president down, is treating as a very big deal. First and foremost, we've learned that this directly concerns the president, in part his communications with and allegedly his commitment to a foreign leader. In addition, three sources now tell CNN that both the White House and Justice Department are involved in blocking the complaint. Separately, the New York Times is reporting that the complaint alleges multiple acts by the president that, according to their report, quote, go beyond any single discussion with a foreign leader. Now, some of the reporting surrounds what uh, Michael Atkinson, the intelligence community's inspector general, told the House Intelligence Committee behind closed doors this morning. One source familiar with the briefing tells CNN he referred to, quote, a sequence of events and, quote, alleged actions. Another source disputed he provided any substantive detail. So as to handing over the actual complaint, committee chairman Adam Schiff had this to say. We do not have the complaint. We do not know whether the press reports are accurate or inaccurate about the contents of that complaint. But what I do know is this. If, in a matter within the jurisdiction of the Director of National Intelligence, you have an employee of that community or a contractor or a detailee who follows the law and makes a complaint, and it is possible for the subject of that complaint to essentially quash the complaint or keep it from Congress, then this system is badly broken. Well, Chairman Schiff also cited a passage in the Inspector General's Tuesday letter to the committee. In it, the IG takes issue with claims made by the acting director of national intelligence that this does not concern intelligence activity and that the complaints did not rise to the level of urgent concerns that the law says Congress needed to be told about. Quoting the Inspector General now, the subject matter involved with the complainant's disclosure not only falls within the DNI's jurisdiction, but relates to one of the most significant and important of the DNI's responsibilities to the American people. Now, if in fact they do relate to allegations the President of the United States made some sort of improper commitment to a foreign leader, it would certainly be a big deal. Though, as you'll see tonight, whether that's even against the law is now a subject of debate, which says a lot about where we are these days. As for the President, he tweeted this. Virtually any time I speak on the phone to a foreign leader, I understand that there, may, uh, that there may be many people listening from various U.S. agencies, not to mention those from the other country itself. No problem. Knowing all of this, is anybody dumb enough to believe that I would say something inappropriate with a foreign leader while in such a potentially heavily populated call? Well, keep it honest, whether the president is, in his own words, dumb enough, that's uh, unclear. But his larger denial would certainly be easier to swallow if it weren't for some of what we know he has done when he's not surrounded by witnesses. We know that he did reveal classified information to Russia's ambassador and foreign minister in a conversation we only learned about through Russian media. We know on other occasions, the president has spoken to Vladimir Putin without note takers in the room, someone, something no modern president has done before. We also know in a story broken by CNN's Jim Shudo that the US intelligence uh, has extracted a top Kremlin asset in part reportedly out of concern the president might blow his cover. So there's that. There's also the broader question of whether you can take what the president says at face value. He tells so many obvious and checkable untruths, including this. There has never been, ever before, an administration that's been so open and transparent. I was the most transparent, and am, transparent president in history. Well, all that said, the Constitution gives any president, truthful or not, transparent or not, broad authority to conduct foreign policy. And the law gives a president almost unlimited authority to declassify intelligence if he or she wants to. Just ahead tonight, we'll look at how it's possible, if at all, to reconcile that with the public's right to know that the president, any president, is acting in the country's best interests on the world stage. This is iPhone 11, the next generation of iPhone, and it is jam-packed with great new capabilities in an incredible new design. iPhone 11 comes in six new colors with an all new purple, white, yellow, green, black, and product red. We have an amazing dual camera system with an all new wide camera, with a new sensor with 100% focus pixels for faster autofocus, three times faster in low light. And we have a new ultra wide camera with 120 degree field of view, 
This will let you capture way more in your photos and videos. Because now you can take a wide camera shot like this, but switch to the ultra wide to reveal the scale. Yes. This is doing an optical zoom out 2x, so you can capture way more without moving. So now, when you're taking a wide camera shot, you'll see our new immersive camera interface that lets you see outside the frame, hinting at a bigger shot. Then you can simply tap to switch to the ultra-wide, revealing more of your scene. We also wanted to make it easier for you to take a quick video with quick take. So now, when you're taking photos and you decide you want to take a quick video, simply tap and hold the shutter button to record a video. So video really shines on iPhone 11. In fact, it has the highest quality video ever in a smartphone. iPhone 11 offers so much meaningful innovation, and we want even more people to experience it. So we're really excited to offer iPhone 11 at just $6.99. Wow.